Hey guys, before we continue on to this probably practice changing podcast, I want you to remember that at the end of the podcast, I'm going to tell you about an amazing conference that the Ultrasound Podcast and I are putting together in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Super gorgeous place and amazing people and amazing lecturing and amazing hands on. So just hang on till the end and you'll hear a little bit more about it. Hello, this is Jacob Avila, 5 Minute Sono, and today I'm going to show you how to do an interscaling ultrasound guided brachial plexus block. So your probe of choice for this procedure is going to be the linear transducer. And as far as indications for this procedure, in the textbooks, this is what you will be blocking. Usually you end up missing parts of C8 and T1 right about here, which you can easily see in the picture. In real life, I only use this block for issues with the shoulder and the mid proximal humerus. For anything below that level, I found that the supraclavicular brachial plexus block to actually be a lot more reliable. So here are a couple of indications that I've had it for. You have a proximal uh, humerus fracture right here, shoulder dislocation, and then some, one of the ones that's been described in the past is a uh, deltoid abscess. Um, this picture I got from Highland Ultrasound. This is juicy abscess in here. So this might be a reason to do an interscaling block. So here's the surface anatomy. When performing this procedure, I would highly recommend going from behind the patient. So kind of sitting at the head of the bed, I usually put some towels behind the patient right here so that I can have this whole area exposed and that the bed doesn't get in the way. When you do it this way, you just have so much more ergonomicity. Is that a word? Sometimes the patient has a well-developed trapezius muscle. I find myself actually going through the trap muscle with the needle, even though the probe is here in front of the deltoid. So it'll be, the probe will be here and the needle will come in from back this way. So let's zoom in here. Your target is going to be the brachial plexus as it lies in between the anterior and middle scaling. What we're aiming for is the brachial plexus trunks, which is just past the root. So here's the roots right here. T1, C8, C7, C6, C5, and then over here are the trunks. And this is usually what you're targeting. Usually this is about the level of the C6 vertebral body. So over here, we're going to have the carotid artery down here. And this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle up here, so carotid, and you're gonna move a little more laterally in the neck until you find the anterior and the middle scaling. So right here is the anterior scaling, there is the brachial plexus, kinda of looks like stoplights a little bit, and here is the middle scaling. So when I was a fellow, I had Matt Dawson, who was my fellowship director, uh, do these blocks on me because I wanted to know if they were painful, what they would feel like. So there's my brachial plexus in yellow, here's my middle scaling over here, and my anterior scaling, and you're gonna see a needle come in over here. I'm just gonna fast forward it a little bit. There you see the needle coming into view. And right there, what Matt's gonna do is he's gonna push a little bit of fluid. It's called hydrodissection to see where you're at. Now you see a little fluid coming out, but it's kind of going into the muscle belly right there. So that is not in the uh, interscaling groove, which is really where you want. So he's gonna push a little bit further, keep doing the hydrodissection, not quite there yet, in the muscle belly. And then right here, you'll see now there's fluid creeping in between the interscaling and my middle scaling, the interscaling brachial plexus, excuse me, and the middle scaling. So you want to see the middle scaling kind of push away from the brachial plexus and the anterior scaling. That's what you want to see, this fluid collection right here. So here's one that was done in a real patient. Now, on this one, I don't have a great view of the entire needle, but the tip is very easily visualized, a little triangular thing right here. So right here is the brachial plexus, and you can see right here, see this hypochoic fluid collection collecting here? This is the anesthetic infiltrating the area in the inner scaling groove right there. So that's actually where you want it. So here is another example. So real quick, I'm gonna pause it right here. The brachial plexus here doesn't look exactly like that classic stoplight sign. As you move a little closer to the clavicles, they'll start to look a little more kind of honeycomby like you see here. You don't necessarily need to do it right always where it is that stoplight as long as you're getting part of it. Although if you see that classic stoplight appearance and you're able to get it there, then you're more likely to get good energy to that shoulder and that proximal humerus. So here is another example. We have our brachial plexus over here, and over here you can see the needle shaft. Right here's a needle tip, and you can see I'm doing a little bit of hydrodissection. So as I go into, uh, try to go into the interscaling groove, I'm doing a little aliquot. You can see right here, you can see that I'm actually getting some fluid up above and around the brachial plexus. This means that I'm not quite in the interscaling groove where you actually want the anesthetic. So while I might get some analgesia, I'm not gonna get a good 
interscaling brachial plexus block this way. So what I did here, I'm going to back up just a little bit. So right here, what I'm doing is I don't like my angle. So I'm backing up and I basically come right up to the skin surface and then redirect a little more deep the needle tip and then go through. The reason why I don't just you know, try to force it down below is that my needle shaft is already in the muscle belly here. So I'll just kind of bend my, the shaft a little bit, but the tip should still stay right there. So you got to pull back a little bit. Don't come out of the skin and create a new puncture wound. Just come up to about the subcutaneous tissue where you can redirect and then redirect down, which is what I do right there. So I'm going to take a, a second try doing a little aliquot here, testing it out just testing it out. And I'm right here. You can see I'm actually in the muscle belly itself. I'm actually in the middle scaling, um, not giving an effective block. I mean, that middle scaling is definitely anesthetized, but I'm not really seeing that inner scaling groove kind of expand the way that I want to. So I'm going to try again, third time, third time's a charm. And right there, you can see finally that fluid is getting right in that inner scaling groove right there. And you can see the brachial plexus move away from the middle scaling. That's when you know that you have your anesthetic in the appropriate area. Now, with this procedure, you do have a lot of other nerves that are kind of around that area. So if you put too much, or you're a little bit too deep, you might run into issues like involvement of the phrenic nerve, involvement of the long thoracic nerve. There have been reports of like facial stuff happening with this. That is one of the reasons why I usually use lidocaine with epi or short acting. Because usually when I'm doing this, it's like for a reduction. And I only need that area to be a sensei for just a little while. So know that there are side effects because of all the other stuff that are around there. But as far as brachial plexus blocks, this one probably is one of the safer ones as long as you have good visualization of that needle tip. So to recap, you want to look for that stoplight in between the anterior and middle scaling muscles. Avoid the blood vessels. Throw on some color flow along your path just to make sure you're not lacerating the arteries or veins. You actually want that needle to go through the trap. So you see the transducer anterior to the traps and then your needle behind it and the needle is going to be in plane with the ultrasound beam. And what I do is I rock the transducer towards the needle because remember you don't want a needle to be going inside the human body at any point without being able to see it and know exactly where it's at. So I'll rock the beam towards the needle, find it, and then track it along until I get to the border between the middle scaling and the interscaling groove. You want to put about 10 to 20 cc's. Now, this is a little bit on the conservative side, but it's what I do. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in the text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want this pushed directly to your smart device, just go to whatever podcasting service you use, type in 5-Minute Sono, leave me a rating and review, and subscribe. Thank you.